good afternoon. Just enjoying a beautiful day uh, down here in North Carolina. Off the phone with a buddy of mine. I guess it's still pretty wet and miserable and cold back home, back up in New Hampshire. But uh, we were talking. Coincidentally, he found a, uh, a big snapping turtle in the road. Was worried because it wouldn't get out of the road and was going to get hit. So he, you know, he's got a. He's made it his life's mission to make sure that wildlife stays out of harm's way. Go on, buddy. Which is a good mission. It's not a good place for you. Go on. But uh, a lot of people don't realize it, but a snapping turtle, this was a snapper, as you'll see, but snapping turtles have a really important part of the ecosystem. And they tend to get, people don't pay a lot of attention to them because you don't see them unless they're in the road. And if snapping turtles had their way, they would uh, spend most of their time underwater and never be in contact with people. But unfortunately for them to breed, they have to get out and find sandy places and lay the eggs. And that's generally where probably 95% of them die is in the process of either crossing the road or putting their eggs. You know, once they lay their eggs, the survival rate is very small. For instance, this, this particular turtle here was actually laying eggs in a sandy pull-off where the fire trucks come in to practice and pump water out of the river. Well, how long do you think those turtles are going to survive? Never mind birds and cars running over them and just people not knowing what to do. So. But regardless, they, uh, I mean, it's not, you know, a lot of people don't realize, I mean, it's the state of New York, uh, it's their official reptile, is a snapping turtle. I mean, snapping turtles range, realistically, I think their natural range is from like Saskatchewan to Florida. They're, they can get up to, oh, I don't know, quote me on this, but like 60 pounds, 50, 50 to 60 pounds in the wild. And then they, when in captivity, they can actually get, you know, up around 80 pounds. So they, they get big. They, and you know, they've been around forever. Uh, they've survived things that a lot of species haven't, you know, and, and through not a lot of help from us, I say us as a, as a society, as a people, because a lot of people look at them as nuisance animals. For instance, I had a one particular woman uh, I dealt with a few years ago who was uh, a big part of the Loon Association, which is, you know, very important. I mean, people, she's very active about loons nests and lake levels and made it her life's mission to take care of the loons. And I was in a conversation with her one day. She told me how when her grandchildren found uh, snapping turtles, in the lake, in the pond, should nail their heads to a tree. <laughs> and I said, really, why do you do that? She said, well, I'm of no use to anyone. And it's like, okay, <laughs> well, uh, to give you some idea, uh, snapping turtles, this is a woman that has dedicated her life to preserve uh, a loon survival. Is probably one of, you know, uh, is one of snapping turtles' biggest enemies. So just to give you an idea, they're not exactly looked after. I mean, there are, you know, biologists that, that preserve uh, areas for them to nest and so forth. But uh, by and large, I mean, they have a pretty tough life. I, I like them. I mean, you can eat them, you know, believe it or not. A lot. I mean, a lot of people do. I haven't since I was a kid. My grandmother used to make a stew out of them. And uh, it's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, they die hard. You know, you... Uh, you can cut their head off and two days later they're still moving around. It's a tough animal. And I often wonder if something dies that hard, maybe I shouldn't be killing it. If we're going to use you know, animals as a resource to uh, support ourselves, to feed ourselves, you know, we've got an obligation to see to it they can uh, reproduce and do what they have to do. I mean, that's just that's just part of the deal. If you're going to go harvest whitetail, then you, you kind of owe it to them to make sure that they have a Decent habitat and enough carrying capacity is maintained so they can reproduce and go on. Uh, otherwise, they'll be gone. Uh, we'll probably, probably never get rid of the snapping turtle. For some reason, they just—I think a, a lot of it is because they spend most of their life underwater. And I'm no—I'm no marine biologist or reptile expert by any means, but do a little research on it, and uh, they're a pretty interesting critter. And uh, you'll notice this one in particular goes off. A off the side of the bridge and it, it appears that he was running away or she was running away from my friend in, in, in case they walk off those bridges all the time 
you know, I'm sure a lot of them bust their shells or doesn't, you know, it hurts them. Uh, oh, one thing too, never pick a snapping turtle up by the tail. If you find, if you're in a situation where if you find a turtle, you want to help it or get it out of the road. Don't ever pick it up by its tail. It can just dis it can dislocate their vertebrae. Uh, I've seen people do it, or I've seen it done, and it's it's not good. Don't ever try to pick one up because you're either going to get scratched by the feet, or that head will almost reach. You'd be that head will come out and reach almost back to that tail. It's amazing. Best thing to do if you have one is is, is get a shovel, flip them upside down, scoop them up real quick, and then but. It, they can flip themselves back onto their feet and out of the shovel. So what I do is I just bounce it, keep bouncing it in the shovel and just get them off the road and then let them go. And once they're off the road, they'll go into the woods. But uh, don't, ever, don't ever try to pick one up. Um, and uh, you know, if you, not a lot of people have a shovel in the back of their car. So the, the best you can do in a lot of cases is to, uh, you know, kind of babysit it, try to get people to not to hit it. Don't kill yourself, don't put yourself in harm's way by any stretch of the imagination. But if you know, if you can help one out of the road, then so be it. But as I said, uh, they walk, I've seen them, I've been fishing, uh, you know, trout fishing by a culvert. And um, all of a sudden this tis snapping turtle falls out of the sky, it seems. And what happened was it just walked off the edge of that bridge embankment because they don't have any association with height. They don't understand that. They don't, you know, they're in the water or they're, so they walk off these, edges uh and fall they just to them, i don't i don't think it register they don't know what they, they don't associate that with dying so anyway uh you know keep that in mind and, and like i say just try to give them a break and uh they'll they'll probably be around a lot longer than we will i'm sure anyway see you in the woods somewhere